speaker. One of five then is Judy Baker, the regional director for the United States Department of Health and Human Services. Judy, thank you for being with us. I have to say the last time I spoke with you, you were still a Missouri lawmaker, and you were rolling up your sleeves dealing with the childhood obesity issue at that time. Where does medical uh, patient safety and medical errors fit now with your profile in the Department of Health uh, at the federal level? Well, very kind of you to remember that, Nick, um, and it's very nice to be here today. Um, we, uh, of course, you know, the quality and value uh, statements uh, and initiatives and principles in healthcare are incredibly important uh, to both lives and to the bottom line. And so as the Department, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, of which I am now the regional director, um, under Secretary S Kathleen Sebelius uh, comes uh, uh, making uh, begins to make a well not begin uh, actually this this started uh, with her with the very beginning of her tenure uh, a priority of patient safety high quality uh, when we raise quality we always find also that we can lower costs to the system so I wanted to to just today say how impressed I am so far with the work being done in Missouri to reduce medical errors and healthcare acquired infections. This work is incredibly important and I applaud the media for taking a moment to highlight this. Um, uh, often uh, media likes to cover events, but really what's the, what the real news here is the non-events and what we want to create is more non-events. And I applaud the Missouri Center for Patient Safety for making an emphasis of the month of April. Um, as we know that uh, nationally, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that at least 1.7 million healthcare associated infections occur each year and lead to 99,000 uh, deaths of patients. So uh, your opening was uh, very um, enlightening, uh, Nick. The, uh, and the adverse medication events cause more than 770,000 injuries and deaths each year. And the cost of treating patients um, uh, with, harmed by these events is estimated as high as $5 billion a year. Um, a report in uh, Health Affairs just recently uh, found that errors or adverse events occur in nearly one out of every three hospital admissions, uh, and some of those are more severe than others. Uh, I think everyone would agree that, uh, you know, when a person enters the hospital that they need to, uh, when they come out, they, want, they need to not have any more um, health conditions than when they went in, and that is the goal uh, of the Secretary and the Missouri Center for Patient Safety. Um, last week, uh, the Federal Department of Health and Human Services launched the big initiative um, in, in conjunction with some other things they've already done called the Partnership for Patients. And this program commits a billion dollars over the next three years to make patients safer by aiming at two major goals. And with that investment, of course, um, we, uh, we, the, the uh, goal will be to uh, reduce uh, cost as well. So uh, we're, uh, the two main goals are to reduce preventable ho hospital-acquired conditions by 40% by 2013, using 2010 as a base year. Meeting this goal would mean that 1.8 million fewer injuries uh, to patients would occur with more than 60,000 lives saved. Uh, and then the second goal is to reduce preventable complications during a transition from one care setting to another so that hospital readmissions would be re reduced by 20% compared to 2010. This would mean more than 1.6 million patients would recover from illness without a return trip to the hospital. You know, we're very much wanting to look at that kind of round trip to the hospital event uh, and keep pe uh, patients more comfortable at home. Um, so this initiative is an unprecedented effort that brings together hospitals, physicians, nurses, employers, unions, patient advocates and health plans to improve the safety of healthcare in America. We already have over 1,300 hospitals, as well as physicians, nurses groups, consumer groups, employers have, uh, have pledged to support the new initiative. Uh, and uh, the goal is to get uh, up to 2,000 of those providers um, signed on to the pledge, and we think that we'll more than meet that goal because just in a week we're already almost three quarters of the way there. There's, there's been great enthusiasm around this initiative. Um, we will be, by reducing these medical errors, bring down rising health care costs that have been putting a burden on families. 
Uh, we know this effort can pay off because of some progress already being made. Um, uh, Becky mentions uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, programs that they've been involved in, the Central Line Associated Bloodstream Infection Program in a Kansas City uh, hospital. Uh, and they've already, uh, as she said, um, avoided 17 bloodstream infections, uh, saving $1.4 million in at least one life. That's just one example of how best practices can be put in place uh, to both save lives, um, improve conditions, and lower cost. Um, I would say also that you know these kinds of programs are being um, supported also by health insurers like Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas City. Um, so you know I know that uh, Becky will be highlighting some more of the of the great efforts that have been going on in Missouri. Uh, all of these are part of state-based efforts around my region, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri, to um, uh, respond to the national quality strategy of the Secretary, um, uh, Secretary Sebelius. So um, it, uh, where we want to go with this is, of course, to sign up more hospitals, uh, more providers, uh, and really set a focus uh, toward a new future in healthcare. Um, and to accomplish this, we need healthcare providers to be relentless in reducing the risk of injury from care, um, working on standards of procedures and workforce uh, with wide-ranging skills and the workloads that allow time uh, for errors to be corrected. This will take great leadership. Uh, we thank the uh, Missouri Center for pa uh, Patient Safety uh, for their leadership and uh, count them a good partner in this program. With, part, with programs like the Partnership for Patients, we hope to get um, to a, a new uh, level and, of non-events in the very near future. Judy, um, lots of attention you talk about, money, focus, leadership going into trying to solve this issue or at least reduce the incidences of medical errors. Can you give us a, a one practical example, though, of, of what any hospital is doing that is helping to reduce medical errors? Uh, well, I think I, I would highlight a, a new program that many hospitals are looking to work on, and that's called the Care Transitions. And uh, what happens sometimes is in our transition from the hospital to home, uh, uh, the, the discharge process is really important to see how patients are taking uh, instruction and getting the right medications uh, and getting into the right care setting, moving from hospital to home, in order that they um, uh, continue to, uh, uh, you know, they continue to get better um, and they have the right care at home. Uh, using that, there's about uh, 500 million dollars going to be put towards that program through CMS um, starting this year, uh, transitioning people to home better so that they won't have the round trip to the hospital. We've seen. Um, there's also been some accountable care organizations that have been tried in demonstration that have gone towards um, putting in place best practices with uh, providers uh, coming together to uh, better distribute best practices. Uh, there's hospitals that have uh, participated in those, those demonstration product projects uh, in the past at CMS and have been quite successful and will be rolling those uh, types of organizations up of, um, due to some legislation in the Affordable Care Act. Now, Judy, you have to head off to another appointment in a moment, but I just wanted to ask other members of the media on the line, if you have a question for the Regional Director of the Federal Department of Health right here, who serves our area. Yes. Um, am I on the line? Yes. Yeah, please, continue. Hi, um, my name is Jennifer Gordon. I'm a reporter at the St. Joseph News Press in St. Joseph, Missouri. And um, I just actually came off of a health conference where we talked about hospital-acquired infections, and um, there was some concern that part of the problem is in the medical culture, making sure that, you know, there's vigilant hand-washing and that sort of thing. Are any of these directives going to be handling, I mean, are there any consequences being set up for hospitals that fail to, you know, meet these standards or, you know, uh, sorry, I'm not making myself very clear, but you know what I'm saying? Yes, well, there's already uh, oversight through uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services uh, do uh, visit hospitals and review many of their practices already. Uh, what the Secretary is asking in these pledges at, is that um, we actually set some metrics 
and that we um, ask the, the hospitals to do better measurement, uh, better oversight, um, and to uh, take themselves from um, where we are today and prove improvement uh, in three years. And so um, uh, with the pledge, there, there will bring about some new scrutiny um, from within a hospital and a hospital system and providers to, to ask themselves, what can we do better? If they find that uh, uh, perhaps uh, some of the sterilization and or hand washing procedures or anything like that is a um, contributing factor to uh, their metric, then I'm sure that they will take that into consideration and find a process to improve. Uh, that's the goal. Uh, by by uh, asking for the pledge, we are kind of shining a light on the problem and ash actually asking for there to be progress in, in the metric. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Judy Baker, thank you for joining us on this, uh, this teleconference, looking at uh, patient safety in the state of Missouri during this month where we are examining patient awareness. 